be presenting a new module which is on differentiated instruction and this is the first episode of a series of episodes at least four and the first module is an introductory one and we are going to just try and understand what is this whole idea about differentiating our teaching in our classes differentiated teaching differentiated instruction differentiated teaching strategies differentiated methodology call it what you will we are basing our work on the research done by Carol Tomlinson in this area of differentiating our pedagogy and instruction in the class. And she describes it very beautifully and succinctly when she says that the goal of differentiation can really be nothing more than catering to individual needs in our class. <clears throat> so bearing that in mind, we are going to continue with this episode of the first, first of the series which will give us an introduction and a top view of what differentiated instruction is really all about. Let's begin by putting our students' needs right at the center. So this is not just lip service that we are doing to our students about child-centered education. What we are saying is really put that in the center. And then around that, if you're familiar with Chikshanga, and if you've seen our earlier episodes, you would be by now quite comfortable with this idea of the teaching-learning cycle. So we like to begin with what to teach, which is nothing but the learning goals, learning outcomes, learning objectives, call it what you will. That's what we need to really get in place first. And once we are clear about that, we then go on to how should we teach. So that's about pedagogy, teaching techniques, teaching strategies, known by various names, but basically the pedagogy, you know, the art and the science of teaching children. That's where we come to next. And then we complete the cycle by then trying to understand that if we have done this, how do I know whether my students are getting it, whether all of them are at par with whatever learning objectives I decided for this class. Because it is a cycle, it gives me the opportunity to go back and therefore it actually becomes formative assessment. I go back if the students are not really getting it and this is where the differentiation begins to come in because I now realize that maybe everybody hasn't really been able to grasp what I wanted them to because they've taught in a certain way which was not really conducive for everyone absorbing that information. And this is the time when I start thinking about, hey, I need to do something about differentiating my teaching. So that's the teaching learning cycle, the what, the how, and the whether. It's a framework, an elegant one. Everything that we do with teaching and learning is contained in these three domains of what to teach, how to teach, and how do I know whether my student is learning. But then, how about now bringing in and tweaking these three things with a little bit of differentiation? So at all times, we keep the learning outcomes constant for the entire class. They don't change. You know, we draw them out of the NCRT as we know. But yet, we make it a little bit different content. And we're going to see how in the subsequent episodes. But even today, we'll try to get a bird's eye view of what do we mean by different content. And if that gets differentiated, then we also bring in some differences in the processes of our teaching, which is actually pedagogy. So a little bit of different pedagogy then, and also how can assessment be left behind? And therefore, how do we bring in some differentiation even in the products that we get out of assessment? Product over here means whether they do a quiz, a PowerPoint presentation, whether they present just a, a, you know, a role play to you, whatever they do in formatives, we are going to call that product. So what, how, and whether is now known as content, process, and product. And this is the way Tomlinson really looks at this entire framework of differentiation. Let's try and understand what are some differences amongst our students. There are three significant differences, and these matter to us pedagogically. Pedagogically, we're not looking at differences which are demographic and geographic. Okay? We are saying that this comes in the way of teaching everyone in the same manner. Now, what are these three differences? The most important and significant one is the difference in readiness. That means some students are ready, some are more ready, some are less ready than what you want them to be at when you're introducing new concepts and new skills. Now, what is this idea of readiness? It's something which has got to do with what kind of and what degree of previous knowledge do they have in their long-term memory? Because we know as educators, we need to pull out something from their long-term memory and build the new brick of knowledge. And that's the way the wall of knowledge becomes firm and concrete. Now, some students do not have that relevant prior knowledge at all. 
and therefore they're not ready to absorb what you're about to teach. And this is a significant difference and we will be devoting one entire episode to therefore how do we work with this difference or the gap in readiness. But that's not the only thing. We know that there is another way in which the students are different from each other in our classes. And this can be pointed to the way they learn. And that's why it's known as learning styles. There's a lot of research done on this. You might be familiar with the WAC model. Some are visual learners, some are auditory learners, some are kinesthetic learners. And therefore, how do I vary my teaching to reach every child in my class is something we would be talking about later. But the third difference and the one which uh, has been a buzzword everywhere is interests. Our students and all of us as well have got a variety and multitudinous interests. Now, this has got something to do with the way our brains are really wired. So the neural wiring and the firing of all our neurons is what makes us different. We all may be having the same brain in terms of how it looks or what it weighs, but it's very different cognitively because we are growing up with different experiences. And that's the, what, that's the thing we are going to take up when we say, how do I deal with these multiple interests that my students have in my class? I need to look at all these three significant differences, the difference of readiness, difference of learning styles, as well as the difference of interest. You might now become quite conscious about, therefore, how is it that we've got these children who've got learning gaps? Maybe the schools did not take care of this idea of a difference in readiness or a difference in learning style, or also a difference maybe in interest. Perhaps we missed it totally. And that's why there is a gap in their learning, students are lagging behind in the class. However, we believe that there is an overlap between learning styles and learning interests. And that's why when we are dealing with an episode of how do we deal with this, we're going to be taking them together. Let's kind of bring it all together and try to understand that therefore, what do I do with differentiation? We've understood what are the three significant differences. We also know what Tomlinson is saying about content, process, and product. Marrying this what we get is this image. So what we really need to keep in mind are these differences that students have. One, in learning styles. The second one, in learning interests. And the significant one, in learning readiness. This is what is, known, is actually known is causing the learning gap because they're not ready to absorb what's coming their way. But what do we do? Brain actually vary, therefore. Keeping these three factors in mind, the differences in mind, we therefore vary what? Quite obviously, we vary what is known as the syllabus or the learning objectives or the learning outcomes or the goals or the content. We also bring a little bit of variety in the process of teaching or the pedagogy. And we also make sure that there is some differences and variety in the way we do our formative assessments. This is the full picture of what it means to be doing differentiated instruction. Let's put it all together before we conclude this episode. Right in the center, we are putting our individual student needs. Unless we take cognizance of that, we're not really going to be able to move forward for any kind of differentiated instruction. The desire may be there, but we, know, we need to know where to begin. So first, keep the individual student's needs in mind. Then we have this elegant teaching and learning framework of what should we teach, how should we teach, and how do I know whether my student is learning? And because it's a cycle, it's continuous and formative, it gives me the opportunity to go back to my pedagogy and see that, hey, I need to do some differentiation. Everybody does not learn in the same way. Once we recognize that, what we are needing to do is bring in a little bit of change in the content, but keeping the learning outcomes stated for the class absolutely constant. How will we do that? We will look at it in episode two. Okay. Right now, we're taking an overview. So we bring some difference there. We also, therefore, bring a little bit of difference in our pedagogy or the process of teaching because now we are aware that students have different learning styles as well as different learning interests. And last but not the least, we also make sure that we bring some change and some variety and give them some choice, actually, in the way they would like to be assessed, informative assessment. We will talk about all of this in subsequent episodes. But just to conclude, the first one, which is an opening one, love what Carol Tomlinson really says you know, about differentiation. She says it's a curiosity of teaching really that no two days are alike. They're never alike. 
Teacher is not alike, students are not alike, everything is different every single day. But if we are not careful, all the days can take on the deadening sameness because we will never bring a variety. So we need to be careful about how we're teaching and most importantly about the individual learning needs of all of our students. That's all in the first episode. If you like what we present, do like our channel, do share forward, do subscribe. We'll bring you the remaining episodes soon. Thank you.